Welcome to Let the Quran Speak. My name is Sophia, I'm your host. The aim of Let the Quran Speak is to help you gain deeper insights into Muslims and Islam as it's practiced here and in other parts of the world. Did Muslims Invent Muhammad? That's the subject of a book by Robert Spencer entitled Did Muhammad Exist? An Inquiry into Islam's Obscure Origins. Spencer claims Muhammad was a myth, a political invention created much later to serve the needs of an expanding empire. Are his claims true? Here to assess them, Dr. Shabir Ali, President of the Islamic Information Center. Brother Shabir, what does it mean if, if Spencer's claims are true? Does this call into question the basis of Islam and Islamic belief? <laughs> yes, of course, in a very big way. If, if the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did not exist, then um, th th there's not, no reason to be a Muslim. Mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, the Quran would be um, one of the most massive fakes in all of uh, history in, in terms of literature. Uh, but of course, his claim is not true. <laughs> all right. Explain that. Why is it untrue? Well, yeah, first of all, we should, uh, uh, I mean, it, every Muslim knows that Muhammad existed and uh, it's common uh, knowledge that there was a man named Muhammad who was the founder of the Islamic religion, even mm -hmm. among non-Muslims. Uh, so we should now be asking the reverse question, why does this man think that Muhammad did not exist and that Muslims invented him? Mm -hmm. And w are there other people who think that? Because he claims to be building on scholarly sources. Um, that exists. So, what is he referring yes. to? In, in every field of inquiry, there, there is a mainstream scholarship and then there is fringe scholarship. Mm -hmm. Mainstream scholarship on, um, on Islam uh, would uh, include Muslim mainstream scholarship, but it would also include uh, non Muslim mainstream scholarship. So, in other words, among Orientalists, uh, Europeans who have uh, studied the, the religions of the East and uh, cultures and civilizations of the East. Uh, you have uh, a, a stream of academic scholars who have been studying Islam for a couple of hundred years now. And uh, uh, they have developed sort of consensus, uh, an idea about how Islam originated and developed and, and eventually uh, reached the uh, stage that we know now to be Islam. And, and they generally say that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did exist. He was a historical person, but that Muslims made more of him than he actually was. And mm. they invented things, put things in his mouth and so on in terms of the Hadith collections. But when it comes to the Quran, uh, a certain scholar, Theodore Noldek, uh, from more than 100 years ago, uh, uh, described the collection of the Quran in the time of Uthman, the third caliph of Islam, as uh, basically authentic and that uh, many different readings of the Quran are known and they all go back to that uh, core book which was uh, promulgated in the time of the third Caliph Uthman. And this was within two decades after the death of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. So the Quran is authentic, uh, though not all hadiths are authentic. So the hadith okay. collections would have... So the Quran isn't mixture. something that was invented later on. It was something that, you know, is actually from the time that Muslims claim it to be. Exactly. Okay. So now, uh, so that's mainstream scholarship. Mm -hmm. In this case, uh, there is a confluence of Muslim and non-Muslim scholarship. The difference is that Muslim scholarship would insist that the Quran was collected not only in the time of Uthman, but even before that, during the Caliphate of Abu Bakr, mm -hmm. and that Uthman just simply made copies and sent them out to various parts of the Muslim empire. Nevertheless, even if the European consensus is correct that uh, the Quran that we have now goes back to the Caliph Uthman, to Muslims this is still dependable because uh, now we have a book which was put into writing by the companions of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him because within two decades of his death we have not only Uthman who was a companion but Zaid who is said to have co uh, uh, headed the commission to collect the pieces and put them together as the Quran. He's a companion of the Prophet and this was done in the presence of many, many other known uh, and respectable companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him. So it would be like the equivalent of saying we have a book which was put together by the remaining 11 disciples of Jesus and add Matthias to make it 12. Mm -hmm. So these 12 disciples put together this document so we know that this is, these are the teachings of Jesus because the disciples wouldn't lie. They're telling us firsthand what they saw Jesus say and do. Mm -hmm. uh, so if we have uh, in, in the Islamic context now something similar which now the European scholars say we have a book which was composed by companions of the Prophet peace be upon him within that that early period uh, then and, and they themselves also being careful not to record what they thought and what they would like to write but uh, to just simply recollect what the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him taught them 
and to put them in this book, and this is the book of God, well then, to Muslims, this is quite dependable. And that's the mainstream scholarship. So you, you've mentioned Jesus, and, mm -hmm. and, and the question is, how does, how does uh, the historical record about Muhammad, about the Quran and Islam, because they're all related, how does that relate to the historical record of other uh, religious figures, perhaps, or of other historical important events? Well, if we, if we think of the prophet Jesus then, um, uh, let's think about what Robert Spencer himself um, describes. Uh, he, he talks about the uh, historical inquiry into the life of Jesus and so on, and he's mm -hmm. asking, well, why couldn't we make the same kind of inquiry about the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him? Mm -hmm. And he's right. Well, why should the prophet Muhammad be excluded from this kind of historical inquiry? We should investigate everybody, the Siddhartha Gautama Buddha, uh, Jesus, Muhammad, uh, Krishna, uh, anyone. Uh, mm -hmm who is taken to be a, a revered or a holy figure or an important person uh, to be emulated and followed, uh, our hi historical curiosity should take us there. We want to find out who were these persons before somebody made them into a myth or into a hero. Uh, so, so the inquiry, uh, the, the inquiring, to have an inquiring mind is, is, uh, is a good thing. Uh, but that doesn't mean that the results of all inquiry uh, are, are beneficial or dependable. Uh, sometimes people take their research in directions, that per per sometimes they're motivated by personal interest, uh, which takes them beyond uh, the uh, confines of uh, uh, academic disinterest and, and neutrality and objectivity. And this is what I think has happened in the case of uh, Robert Spencer. Mm -hmm. So in any case... So the question is, is what we know of Muhammad dependable compared to what we know of other historical figures? Yes, so that's much, much more dependable. And okay. uh, he himself in his book uh, admits that the Gospels that we have of Jesus were comp uh, compiled within uh, 40 to 60 years after the crucifixion. Mm -hmm. So that means in the late decades of the first century. And in, you say 40 years for the first and earliest of the four Gospels, that means that for 40 years, uh, the Christian community did not have these written documents. So how did they think about Jesus? How did they recollect his words? How did they preach about him? And then um, uh, Christian scholars generally say that uh, the Gospels as they now are written uh, recollect not only what Jesus said, but the, how he was being preached about within mm -hmm. those, uh, that, that 40 year gap. Uh, so it, by comparison, uh, the companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, giving us the Quran uh, from the time of Uthman, uh, are giving us not the preaching of, of the community, but the precise words which they memorized uh, and, and wrote down from the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him. So that's very different because it, we, we do not have on record that anyone went about in the early decades of the first century uh, uh, memorizing the, the actual words of Jesus. And this is why we have so often the same words represented in different ways in the four Gospels, mm -hmm. because people captured the gist of what he said without uh, memorizing the precise words. So then, why does he think that uh, the Prophet Muhammad is invented? I think this is the most important question. Yeah, and uh, he points question. to like bi biographical information and says that it, it came 125 years after Muhammad's death. He points to some coinage, inscriptions, things like that that don't reference Muhammad. So maybe you can comment on yes. some of those things. So I started uh, referring to the fringe scholarship. Mm -hmm. in, in arguing the matter in that way, he is pursuing uh, uh, lines of argument uh, presented by a fringe scholarship. And uh, more than this, actually he is putting together a mishmash of ideas that came from various scholars who each in their own way is on a fringe. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of these ideas, in fact, were abandoned by some of the protagonists uh, who, who first put out these ideas. And he's still citing them as the authorities behind, uh, who, who stand behind these ideas. Mm -hmm. l l let me give an example. Uh, for example, he would say that uh, there is no mention of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, on the f uh, early coins which were minted in mm -hmm. the Umayyad uh, dynasty. Uh, well, th that's true. But, but what is the uh, reason for this absence of the mention of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him? Well, uh, a, a certain uh, scholar writing uh, in the collection by Angela uh, uh, Neuwart uh, and others uh, entitled The Quran in Context um, 
Heidemann. Heidemann writes uh, about these coins that uh, the, uh, the early Umayyad caliphs did not find it necessary to produce their own coins. They were just simply using coins that were already available from, from the uh, Roman uh, Empire. Uh, and though they established their own Islamic State, they didn't see that it was necessary to have an empire, mm -hmm. a, an Islamic empire that mints its own coins. And uh, uh, later on, when they will try to mint their own coins, they found from experience that they minted a gold coin, for example, and because it did not bear a cross, uh, it could not become popular among Christians. And they wanted the coins which were already in use and which were already popular. There was no need to change them. So what uh, these um, fringe scholars are, are saying now is that look at these coins. They are more like Christian coins than Muslim coins. And that means that Islam as a religion did not really quite exist. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and maybe Muslims were a sort of Christian at this time. And, and Islam would really come later. And when they uh, come up with the idea of Islam, then they would invent its founder, the Prophet Muhammad. But this kind of conspiracy theory uh, uh, requires first rejecting uh, the Islamic evidence and, and start with a blank slate and then just coming up with some ideas based on some clues here and, and there. But we cannot do history like this. Uh, you mentioned the biography. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, it is true that uh, biographies of the Prophet, peace be upon him, were written some 125 years after the death of the Prophet, peace be upon him. The earliest one we know now, or we have in our hands, is that by Ibn Ishaq, as edited by Ibn Hisham later. Uh, but uh, there were also biographies written earlier, at least uh, some compilation uh, of information regarding some of his expeditions, the Prophet, peace be upon him's expeditions, such as by Musa ibn Uqba. And some scholars have done some detailed studies on this recently, such as Gregor Scholler, and they have shown that, in fact, uh, there is some reliable information within the biography. So you cannot just simply throw out all of the biographies. It is true that the biographies contain some later myths and legends and so on as well, which you have to be wary of. But that does not mean that you throw out the baby with the bathwater and you, you don't take any of the core information. William Montgomery Watt as well has argued along similar lines and showed that, in fact, uh, uh, it, it, there must have been some dependable information. When, for example, a battle has been fought and there are slain uh, soldiers and uh, there are family members now celebrating that we are the descendants of those slain soldiers and there are many such persons now you cannot discount all of them there could be some false claimants but the basic idea that there are fallen soldiers and we are the descendants that is a basic historical fact uh, and many other scholars like Michael Lecker for example in uh, the Cambridge Companion to Muhammad uh, writes that uh, there, there is a historical core which we can definitely um, uh, decipher. Uh, uh, Robert Spencer also relies on uh, uh, Michael Cook uh, and, and, um, uh, and Patricia Crone. But Patricia Crone and Michael Cook, though advancing some of these ideas in, in their book Hagarism, in which they first threw out all of the material from Islamic sources and they went with information that they can glean from other such circumstantial evidence like coins and so on, uh, they first advanced this idea that Islam came later and the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was invented in retrospect. But they have uh, since then uh, rejected the very idea. And now it is very strange that Robert Spencer are referring to these as the scholars who stand behind this idea. They no longer stand behind this idea. They have discounted this idea. So con to conclude then, Muhammad did exist. Yes, to yes. And, and according and to many. According to Muslim scholars and according to uh, the consensus of non-Muslim orientalist uh, academic scholars. All right. Thank you for that, Brother Shabir. You're welcome. We'll take a break. When we return, we will look at the question of martyrdom.